In the last video, we figured out the probability of getting exactly three heads when we have five flips of a fair coin. What I want to do in this video is think about it in a slightly more general way. We're still going to assume we have a fair coin, although we'll shortly see we don't have to make that assumption. But what I want to see, do is figure out the probability of getting k heads, k heads in n flips, in n flips, flips of the fair coin, of the fair, of the fair coin. So the first thing to think about is just how many possibilities there are, where there's going to be n flips. They're going to be n flips. So literally, the first flip, second flip, third flip, all the way to the nth flip. And this is a fair coin. Each of these, there's a each each of these, there's two equally likely possibilities. So the total number of possibilities is going to be two times two times two n times. So this is going to be equal to two to the nth possibilities. Two to the nth possibilities. Now, let's think about how many of those equally likely, and these are all equally likely possibilities. This is a fair coin. Let's think about how many of those equally likely possibilities involve, involve k heads. Involve k heads. Well, just like we did for the case where we had, where we're thinking about three heads, we thought, think about three heads, we say, well, look, we're, the first of those k heads, the first of those k heads, how many different, po how many different buckets could it fall into? Well, the first of the k heads could fall into five, in, into n different buckets, right? It could be the first flip, second flip, all the way to the nth flip. Then the second of those k heads, we don't know exactly how many k is, will have n minus one possibilities, n minus one possibilities. And then the third of those k heads will have n minus two possibilities, since two of the spots are already taken up. And we would do this until we uh, have essentially accounted for all of the k heads. So this will go down all the way to, so this, we will, we will multiply, the number of things we're multiplying is going to be k. One for each of the k heads. So this is 1, 2, 3, and then you're going to go to all the way to n minus k minus 1. And you could try this out in the case of 5. When n was 5 and k was 3, this resulted in 5 times 4 times, and actually we just had to go times 3, and actually that was this term right over here. So I'm, I'm doing a case that is a little bit longer, where k is a slightly larger number, because this right over here is 5 minus 2. That is this one over here. So let me actually, let me just so not to confuse you, let me write it like this. Let me write it like this. So you'll have n spots for that first head, n minus 1 spots for that second head. And then you keep going, and you're going to have a total of these k k things you're multiplying, and that last one is going to be is going to have n minus n minus k minus one possibilities. And now hopefully it'll map a little bit better to the one where we had five flips and three heads, because here there there was five possibilities for the first head, four possibilities for the second head, and then n is 5, 5 minus 2, you had three possibilities for the last head. So this actually works. This is the number of spots where, or the number of ways that we could put, that we can stick those heads in those, or that we can stick, we can put three heads into five different possible buckets. Now, just like the last video, we don't want to overcount things because we don't care about the order. We don't want to differentiate, we don't want to differentiate we don't want to differentiate one ordering of heads, and I'm just going to use these letters to differentiate the different heads. We don't want to differentiate this from this. Heads A, heads B, or any of the other orderings of this. So what we need to do is we need to divide this. We need to divide this number so that we don't count all of those different orderings. We need to divide this by the different ways that you can order k things the different ways that you can order k things. So if you have k things, so you know one thing, two things, all the way to k things, how many ways can you order it? Well, the first thing can be in k different positions. k different positions. Or maybe I'll do it like this. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll do it thing one. I'll call it t for thing. Thing one, thing two, thing three, all the way to thing k. How many different ways can you order it? Well, thing one can be in k different positions. Then k, thing 2 will be in k minus 1 positions. 
And then all the way down to the last one is only going to have one position. So this is going to be k times k minus 1 times k minus 2, all the way down, all the way down to 1. And in the example where we had three heads in five flips, this was 3 times 2 all the way down to 1, 3 times 2 times 1. And so is there a simpler way that we can write this? Well, this expression right over here, this expression right over here, this is the same thing as k factorial. And if you haven't ever heard of what a factorial is, it's exactly this thing right over here. k factorial literally means k times k minus 1 times k minus 2, k minus 2, all the way down to 1. So for example, 2 factorial is equal to 2 times 1. 3 factorial is equal to 3 times 2 times 1. 4 factorial is equal to 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So and it, it's actually a fun thing to play with. Factorials get large very, 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 very fast. So anyway, this denominator right over here can be rewritten as k factorial. This right over here can be rewritten as k factorial. And is there any way to rewrite this numerator in terms of factorials? So if we wrote, if we were to write n factorial, so let me see how we can write this. If we were to write n factorial, get some real estate over here. So n factorial would be equal to n times n minus 1 times n minus 2, all the way down, all the way down to 1. All the way down to 1. That's kind of what we want. We just want the first k terms of it. We just want the first k terms of it. So what if we divide this by, so let's divide this by n minus k factorial. So n minus k factorial. So let's think about what that is going to do. That If we have n minus k factorial, that is the same thing as, we have to do a little bit of algebraic manipulation right over here. That is the same thing as n minus k, n minus k times n minus k minus 1, n minus k minus 1, minus 1, times n minus k times n minus k minus 2, all the way down to 1. And what I want to be when you when you divide these, the one's going to cancel out. And what you may or may not realize, and you can you can work out the math, is everything is going to cancel out here until you're just left with up here. You're just left everything from n times n minus one to n minus k minus one, because this if you if you if you if you expand this out, or if you if you distribute this negative number, this is the same thing as n minus k plus one. So n minus k plus 1 is the integer that's one larger than this right over here. So if you were to divide it out, this would cancel with something up here. This would cancel with something up here. This would cancel with something up here. And what you're going to be left with is exactly this thing over here. And if you don't believe me, if you don't believe me, we can actually try it out. So let's think about what 5 factorial, what 5 factorial over 5 minus 3 factorial is going to be over 5 minus 3 factorial. So this is going to be 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So all of that stuff up there, all, all the way down to 1. Over 5 minus 3 is 2. Over 2 factorial, 2 times 1. 2 cancels with 2. 1 cancels with 1. You don't have to worry about that. And you're just left with 5 times 4 times 3. Exactly what we had up here. 5 times 5 times 4 times 3. And so in general, if you wanted to figure out the number of ways to stick two things in five chairs and you don't care about differentiating between those two things, you're going to have this expression. You're going to have you're going to have this expression right over here, which is the same thing as this right over here. So you're going to have n factorial over n minus k factorial. And then you're going to divide it by this expression right over here, which we already said is the same thing as k factorial. So you're also going to divide it by k factorial. And then you have a generalized way of figuring out the number of ways, the number of ways you can stick two things, or the number of ways, actually, I should say, the number of ways you can stick k things in n different buckets, k heads in n different flips. And so, and another way of writing, and this is actually a generalized formula for binomial coefficients. So another way to write this is the number of ways, the number of ways, given that you have, given that you have n buckets, 
given that you have n buckets, you can put k things in them without having to differentiate it. Or another way to think about it is, if you have n, n buckets or n flips, and you want to choose k of them, and you want to choose k of them to be heads, or you want to choose k of them in some way, but you want to, don't want to differentiate. So all of these are generalized ways for binomial coefficients. So going back to the original problem, what is the probability? What is the probability of getting k heads and n flips of the fair coin? Well, there's two to the n equally likely possibilities. So let's write this down. So the probability of two to the n equally likely possibilities, and how many of those possibilities result in exactly k heads? Well, we just figured that out in, during this video. D that's the number of possibilities. So n factorial over k factorial times n minus k factorial. Now, it m probably is an a OK idea to memorize this, but I'll just tell you frankly, you know, when, the only reason why I still know how to do this 20 years after first seeing it or whatever I first saw it is that I actually just like to reason through it every time. I like to just reason through, OK, I've got five flips. Three of them need to be heads. The first of those heads can be in five different buckets, and the next in four different buckets, and the next one in three different buckets. And then, of course, I don't want to differentiate between all of the different ways. I don't want to differentiate between all of the different ways that I can rearrange three different things. So I have to make sure that I divide it by that I divide it by three factorial, by three times two times one. I want to make sure that I divide it by all of the different ways that I can arrange three different things.